I have something I would love feedback on. It's a mashup time travel slash horror genre film. Our protagonist is Seth, and he has created a time travel app, which he calls the Time Me Up Scotty. Okay, so he's courting investors and hoping to launch the app. But before he has like this big investor meeting, he, you know, gets comfortable on a Friday night, has a bunch of beers and he starts playing with the app and accidentally his own app, which he, it's his own creation, transports him to Salem, Massachusetts in the year 1692. He finds himself in this time travel that's gone through in a cell awaiting trial, having been accused of throwing his specter as witnessed by disgruntled villagers, meaning that he's, his witnesses saw his image somewhere else, essentially accusing him of witchcraft. And the horror comes as he cannot prove his innocence, and he's set to be crushed to death as punishment. So can you tell me your feelings on my pitch? I think it's kind of cool. Um, I like it because it kind of encapsulates what's scary about the past is that you can't reason with people that have a completely different frame, I imagine. I mean, I've never time traveled, so I can't speak to that. But I just think that it's interesting that what makes it scary is that it's an individual who is now living in this reality where there's no reference point for anybody else but himself. And it's taking that time travel genre and then really making it kind of like a horror movie in the sense of that it's kind of like the fish out of water, but done in a way where there's real threats. And now you have to deal with these threats. And I think that is what makes it interesting. So conceptually, I think there's a lot there, but the device to get to where it's really getting good, I think that might need a little bit of work because I, that it seems a little bit like there might be a more of a streamlined way so you have a device that brings you into that time period. But once you're there, I'm really curious about what happens next. I have a little bit of backup, but that was on, on what happens, but that was my initial pitch. So if is would that happen then if I were to pitch, let's say some some individuals, whether it's Zoom or in person, would they then those are some of the notes possibly they would have? What happens next? Or well, I wonder if the frame is you're talking to a manager for potential representation and there's like a networking event and you're just saying, hey, I got an idea. I was just curious. What's the dynamic here? Um, then I'll be able to offer more specific uh, feedback. Okay, great. So we can take that scenario first, and then we could take another one where I'm pitching, let's say, producers. So if I'm at a networking event and I've I've met a manager and I tell them my idea, what would the feedback do you think be? I think it's really gonna depend on the manager's sensibilities. So I mean. You know, who knows? They might love it or they might hate it, you know? So it depends on whether they think they would want to take on me as a client or whoever's pitching this idea and if they like this idea. I don't know if it's about like, did Neely want to take on a potential client, but they might want you to sign a release for that script and send over that material so they can evaluate it. Okay. Good to know. And then if I'm pitching a group of, let's say, five producers and they've got their poker champion face on, their mm -hmm. shades and their and their hat, and I can't tell what they're thinking. They're mm -hmm. emotionless. Um, what would be some possible follow-up in the Q&A? Well, it depends. I mean, if it's pitching five producers, that feels like it might be like a, a networking event that was designed to expose new writers to producers. So I imagine that they'll be respectful and they might have questions and just kind of have a dialogue. Uh, it may be different than if you are working with those producers and then pitching like a financier. So the producers may be more um, animated, more, more verbal and engaged because it's not about you pitching somebody that's just gonna press a button and get your movie made. 
they're going to first see if you're somebody that they might want to collaborate with and just kind of have like a back and forth because to get a movie made is a, uh, it takes a long time typically. So they just want to know if they, they've, that you're on the same page and they like the idea. And then they also might request the script too. What would be some potential questions a financier might ask if I pitch this idea? I don't think that like they're going to just give you a quick answer. More likely that they're going to have a director pitch uh, the project and lead the pitch with a producer. So a writer at the point where a financier is involved, I may mean, not say all the time, but at, once a project's mature enough for that to be the case, a lot of times a director is kind of really driving the pitches to potential financiers. And what if I'm pitching a production company? So I'm pitching them to sell my script, this idea to them. I mean, we're talking about like, let's say an environment where it's like a networking event that some script organization put on and you're pitching a production company. I mean, you're basically telling them the log line in a short period of time. What you know, and when you think about the log line, you're thinking about why is this in differentiating it uh, for this project from others. So they, you're basically trying to sell them a trailer to make them want to read the script. So that's kind of the goal: is that you're just saying, hey. Got a really exciting project. It's a time travel horror film. What if somebody from our time was stuck in, you know, the age of witches and, you know, when they're doing the witch hunt, what kind of scary things could happen during that, you know? And then that's it. Like you just give them a little pitch. Less is more. If the pitch goes on too long and you lose their attention, you just really want to know what the hook is and then punctuate that and let them ask questions. Your goal is to activate their imagination, not to filibuster for like a long time about all these ideas. You, you, you really want to make sure that it's a conversation ultimately and not a monologue. So then they say, thank you very much. Hopefully they validate my parking. They show me out the door. I sit in traffic for two hours and I wonder, did they like it? I think I saw one of their eyebrows raise when I said this one thing. I think they liked it. Or I could tell this one guy, he had his lips pursed and his, his hands crossed, you know, his, he was, the hands crossed a, a bunch against his chest and he didn't like it. And I'm a, I'm a done deal. I'm finished in this town. I mean, you know, they're <laughs> like going it. home. You know, they like it if they asked um, for, you know, your email so their assistant can email a script ah, release. I mean, okay. You, you know, it's not about reading a poker face at that point. It's pretty binary immediately. Do they want to read it? And I don't know what the, in this fictional script event, what the dynamic is and how it's, you know, ran, but sure. most likely if you pitch to these uh, participants and they're excited about it, they're going to get you to most likely write a, uh, write, write on a release um, that they get through maybe themselves or their assistant. And then you send them the script. I mean, that's really what it is. And then, if they love it, then they will want to work with you and that might be a, an option agreement or a shopping agreement and some, you know, lock in the material and ideally pay you some money and then bring on the director and the actor. So like, it's really the starting point of a partnership if somebody, you know, reads it and likes it, but that's what, but it needs to start somewhere. So if they ask for my email, there's a possible second date, I should assume. I mean, if they... We're going to Chili's. I mean, I think that if they have a script release, <laughs> I mean, if they get the script release mm -hmm. um, and then they get the project, you know, once you've signed it, there's no one's just going to ask for the script. And then if they read it and they like it, if you have a manager, an agent, they'll talk with them. And if it's just you, then you talk with the producer and they might send you deal terms about lo locking down the rights and then you bring in you get, you get a lawyer and you negotiate a deal and then if you want to work with the producer you close out the the paperwork and 
Now you have a producer who's attached to the script. How would you shorten this pitch? I think that like the, the, the way into the time travel could be a little bit streamlined because once we get into the new location, the new time period, I think that's when the story becomes more interesting. Okay. So I just think that the the way into the time travel of it all, you know, could need a little work. You're right, because I look at what I have written here that I read to you, and half of this paragraph is all set up. Mm -hmm. So, okay, that's a great point, and thank you for that. So it I should just basically say, I mean, I, I kind of want to make it seem like this is the guy that his own creation got him into this. Kind of like a Frankenstein. Yeah, This exactly. is a monster. So what if it's just like a individual experimenting with technology goes wrong and then it becomes the horror film because now they're it got them in the wrong place and it's broken so now it's like survival yeah i guess i want a, a part where he thought he was above his own creation and that this would never happen to him but instead his own creation got him yeah i think that's something that could be elaborated but you do still need that thesis level pitch where you don't have all these extra details because they could kind of, once you read the script, they'll be revealed over time. But I think the key is looking at the pitch as your trailer. And that trailer, instead of like when a movie is made is it gets you to pay for a ticket and watch it, or download it at home or whatever, stream it. This instead is the trailer is getting you to read the script. And that's what you're verbalizing. 